Hey, what is up guys and welcome back. So in today's video, we're going to take it a step further from the previous video where we covered some of the most recommended components you could purchase for a quadcopter. Now that list wasn't extensive due to the reason that it was things that I would stand by and I have used and I'm still using and they are great value. They're basically premium components and pretty cheap, which was the previous video. However, in today's video, we're going to be covering FPV goggles, backpacks, cameras, some accessories, uh, also very well priced and uh, everything you might want to know, especially if you're getting started or just a veteran, this list might be useful to you. First of all, let's start out with the goggles. Now, the cheapest goggle you should ever buy currently, which is recommended by the whole community and I also stand by, which is the EV800s. And also a nice feature of this is the screen is detachable. So later on, if you keep flying, you like this hobby, you've upgraded, you could always take that with you for anybody that comes with you. You could pop off that screen, give it to him. They could watch what you're doing. And it's really nice to have. However, the thing is with this one, it comes with one receiver. So the range is okay. Um, obviously the other ones that we're gonna check out are gonna be much better. And there's no DVR recording, so you can't put an SD card and start recording. However, you do have an output, but then you'd have to buy one of those little uh, DVR recorders and stick it in there. Could be kind of janky, but, and oh yeah, it has a built-in battery, so that's really great. And battery life is not so well. I think I would probably give it two hours maximum. And uh, now let's go ahead and go into the next one. And again, everything here is linked down below. So the next one is kind of the same thing as the previous one. However, this one is called the EV800D. And this one has two receivers. So you'll have better reception here. The provided antennas are pretty decent. If you don't have that cache, you really don't need to upgrade just yet. Uh, plus, you'll probably be flying just locally around you very close. You won't be going that far. And again, with this one, the screen is also detachable and the quality is pretty great. And uh, I haven't heard anything bad about about these so these are the best two cheapest things you could possibly purchase now in terms of box goggles there's also one that's currently missing which is the best box goggle of all time which is the sky zone and due to some problems with the lens uh, it didn't have problems but some companies did some legal stuff against them so right now they're redesigning their lens because it turns out it was kind of matching some other one in the market um, and it will be back on sale very soon probably a month later so whoever got theirs already, you guys got lucky and the newer ones will just have a different lens. That's all that's going to happen on that one. But we'll probably see it later on when it comes back. So this one here is actually new and it's in the mid range. So this was a previous or this was actually an old goggle back in the day. The Sky Zone Sky O2. However, this has been completely uh, modified. The internals now are using the proper receivers that are found in the Sky Zone Sky O4. So you can expect very good um, reception and distance, uh, almost comparable to the rapid fire. Now the screens will be slightly smaller than the upcoming ones, but this will be this is probably one of the best cheapest goggles you could probably purchase currently. Uh, I know it's a bit expensive, but it's gonna get a little bit more expensive after this one here. So next down the list is an HD02, which is $530. Now, a lot of people say, why the hell would I go analog when I can go d digital for that route? Well, you can, and you can do that. Now, since there isn't that many digital products in the market, I'm not gonna be covering that. You only have two basically DJI goggles and just the, the air units and that's really it and the transmitters. So we're not really gonna cover that. We're gonna go the analog route currently. Uh, HDO2s are really great. I still use my HDOs sometimes, but usually I'm using the SkyZone SkyO4s. However, if you can't find a used pair of HDOs, uh, which I'll actually be selling mine very shortly now uh, once I receive the Sky O2s because I don't think I need them. I barely ever use them. I uh, just have them next to me just to quickly check something. So if you can find a spare HD or used HDO, then you'll be great. As, that'll be actually a really good option as well. This one's obviously going to be better. I haven't used it personally, but knowing Fat Shark, it should be pretty good as well. Now, next down the line, we have the Sky Zone Sky O4X. It's kind of strange that I find it a bit more expensive than HDO. But this one is comparable and probably one of the best along with the HDO here, uh, the HDO2. Uh, very beautiful screens, actually. Really beautiful OLEDs on this thing. Uh, great reception. And you have, you could put two modules in there, which I don't really recommend, but you can. And this hasn't been really tested that much. So you could just stick to the uh, included module here. Now, again, I forgot to mention one thing that's also different between the Sky Zone and the HDO2 
is the fact that the sky zone comes with a really one of the top uh receivers um in the market currently built in inside or it just comes with it in the package as you can tell right there however on the hdo to buy one of the best you're probably you're, there it's right there you're gonna have to dish out another 160 bucks so you're probably up to around 700 dollars or so so yeah so that's also something to keep in mind uh when you get this you're not gonna be able to use it so you, until you buy it a receiver so yeah keep that in mind as well uh this one's gonna be really great and it, it has a power button and it has all kinds of features and the dvr recording is also very great on this one so now we're going to jump into controllers, RC controllers. Now, unfortunately, you only see one FR Sky controller because I am very upset with FR Sky, just like a lot of people. And I've had a bunch, I just loved FR Sky before, but they took a route where it just makes things not compatible and very confusing to a lot of people and actually very annoying at times. So we're going to start with the cheapest and move our way up from things I have tested. So right now we're looking at the Jumper T Lite. Now this thing is pretty interesting due to the fact that it could bind to almost any quadcopter out there that's running 2.4 gigahertz, which is really, really great. And honestly, right now, this has been my main driver. Um, I'm doing a long term test right now on this and I'm finding it just fine. And currently I have nothing to complain about. I mean, it, it's really great. The battery is also replaceable, takes some standard 18650. So this is a really great option. I wish I've had this when we first started out because you know, Jumper actually did really good with this one, in my opinion. That's all I really got to say for this one. So this is a really good option, which is something I'm currently using and it's not hindering my flying performance whatsoever. Now, next down the line, if you really wanted FR Sky, now this is only binds to FR Sky stuff, only basically the new ones. Some older micros won't be able to bind out of the box, and you probably have to purchase some extra things in order to get that running. And this one here used to be my main driver before the updates that ruined the compatibility issues. So, um, but it's a really good radio, but the firmware problems are, they're not problems, they're just the incompatibility problems are very annoying at times, especially for a beginner, you will get, you will just get lost lost trying to find out what to do so yeah just keep that in mind if you're new here next down the line we have a radio master this is a really great full-fledged with a huge ass screen um i haven't heard anything bad about them yet i don't think i've used this one but i've heard a lot of good things about them um not many bad things about them so that's actually nothing bad about them so far uh which is really great and again this one will actually bind to almost anything out there you have fly sky uh fr sky stuff so everything that's running d16 and fly sky you'll be able to bind just fine so uh this is also a really nice one if you wanted that one next down the line is also the jumper it's kind of both of these are kind of almost identical really um but yeah if you wanted one that looks like this you could also grab one they have a lot of functionality and a lot of buttons and stuff uh they're kind of nice now, if you want to go to the premium route, then TBS Tango 2. However, this one out of the box is not compatible with everything. It's only compatible with the TBS uh, cross, the TBS receivers, basically. Um, but it is a premium solution and a premium option. And what's really nice with this one, you could also buy a multi-protocol module, which will basically allow you to connect to just about anything uh, out there from Chinese toys to just about. It's pretty crazy. Those little multi-protocol modules, what they could do. Next down the line is the same one, but this is the Pro. It's really nice. It has foldable gimbals. It's actually really great. This is actually still on my to-buy list, which I am planning on buying within the next two months now since the weather has cleared up. And um, that's really it for controllers. These are the ones that I would currently, in the moment of time, I would recommend. There are plenty others out there. But this is a really uh, good starter list to work your way up from there. And I also recommend you also do your research as well. Don't take this as the final word. I haven't tested these two, but knowing TBS, you shouldn't have a problem, honestly. Uh, next down the line. So we're going to go into backpacks. Now, there's two backpacks that I've used the most and I've gotten a ton of backpacks and I bought a bunch of camera backpacks, all kinds of backpacks. But the two that I actually ended up using the most is this one and this one. However... Personally, if I were to buy one backpack, which one I would recommend would be actually this one. One thing, it's cheaper. And another thing, I feel as if it fits much, much more, maybe because it's a little bit longer. But I'm able to fit quite a lot of things in that thing. And I've been using it for almost a year. It's been rock solid. It could hold a couple uh, quadcopters, maybe up to four quadcopters, two on the sides and two in the back, as you can tell right there. And obviously, you could play around with that and make it hold even more if you wanted to. Uh, but this is a really, really nice backpack uh, that I've been using. There's also better ones out there as well. But for 50 bucks, this fits most of my gear. I usually take a ton of gear with me. Um, so it's, it's, it gets an A plus from me. And this one is good as well. I actually use both. So yeah, but I personally would prefer the URUAV if I were to go and purchase one right now. 
So next down the line, we're going to move into just uh, other accessories that are really good priced and a must have actually when you're in the field. For example, this portable soldering iron. I couldn't find the TS100 for some reason, but I found this one right here, which is just as good. And I have like three of these, I think still. Uh, these are really great. What's really nice is they could go off of your battery's voltage. As you can tell, it comes with an X. Let's actually click that. So they do come with an XT60 adapter right here. So you'll be able to charge uh, to solder in the field. However, I don't really rely on this holder. I mean, it's nice to hold the soldering iron tip, but um, and it, we, like if you do it in the back of your car, it's not really practical in my opinion, which I'm also going to show you something uh, you should definitely pick up, which you could pick up from like Amazon or something. Uh, but yeah, this is a really great one, actually. And I've built many quadcopters with this one. Uh, and even fixed uh, one of these you want to pick up one of these you can find these anywhere but make sure you get it as metal because if it's some of them actually do come plastic and you can actually just burn through the plastic and catch something on fire maybe uh, but definitely get one of these for your portable needs I always have one in my backpack uh, you're gonna need one of these I don't know what the hell they're called they're just called iron tip cleaner so yeah you can, you can find these almost anywhere so definitely pick up one of these when uh, if you're gonna be soldering in the field it's very useful especially when you let it in there keep it in there until it cools down uh, that's that's what I usually do as well now next down the line believe it or not this is the the most item I have ever used in my entire life of FPV which is this battery checker now this thing has been out for so long now and there is yet there's nothing that could beat this and this was actually way more expensive than that I remember it used to be 60 bucks or 70 dollars what's really nice with this one is you can plug in either the XC60 part, it's just for XC60s, or the balance leads. And when you plug in the balance leads, it gives you the voltage for every single cell. Now you can also do something else with this, which is enable USB pass-through mode, which will allow you to charge um, any phone or any USB powered device through your XC60 battery, which is really great. You have to plug in the XC60 to start charging. And you enable that and then you, it'll just give you also information while you're charging. So it's really useful and I can't live without it, honestly, especially when I'm charging, figuring out which batteries are dead, uh, what's wrong with this one. And it has much more features inside, definitely worth every single penny here. So next down the line, if you have 18650s, I'm just letting you know this is the charger I've been using for about two, three years now. And it's been rock solid, actually. I've been charging nickel metal hydride batteries, 18650s. You can only charge two 18650s maximum. And the way you charge 18650s, don't let this fool you, this is not 18650s right here. These are like normal AA batteries here or AAA, whatever they are. Uh, if you're gonna charge 18650s, you're gonna have to do them horizontally and you can only fit two maximum. And you could do lithium ion, you can do everything you want and that comes in a 18650 package and charge that and even set the current uh, you want for that. Now, honestly, I don't know how the hell it would fit a 26650. I, I don't think that's even possible. So I don't know what the hell this is and what this is unless I'm missing something on the size. Oh, wow, it does. Look at that. That's pretty insane here. So it is actually pretty wide when you put an 18650. So yeah, you'll be able to do that. That's really awesome. Oh wow, this is an upgraded version now. I don't I didn't I don't have this one exactly. Mine doesn't take USB C. Mine actually wow, this is really awesome. Okay. So yeah, this one's actually better than the one I have. And it's from the same company. So yeah, it's it's been really reliable. I've I haven't had any single problems with that one. So that's another little nice uh, accessory here. This is also very important, but you could also make this yourself. Now, why is this important? Well, if you go flying and you fly around your car, usually I tend to charge my batteries from my car and you probably need one of these, but you need to make sure if your charger takes a DC input. So, if, so you'll be able to plug that in, make sure the, uh, it'll take a, a male XT60 such as this in that input power. And then you'll be able to just to click this right on your car's battery, turn on the car or just leave it off. I don't recommend leaving it off. It'll actually soak up most of the battery if you charge like five or six batteries. So turn on the car and just charge your batteries. That's what I usually do in summer uh, next to my car. And it's been very useful. So that's just something to keep in mind. You don't have to buy this, but if you know how to make it, make one. But if you buy it, it'll just make your life a little bit easier. Get pretty thick ones also, especially if you're going to be charging quite a lot. It just helps. And well, that's really it. And one more thing, guys, I actually bought a MacBook Air, which I'll be reviewing in the upcoming days in, in the perspective of an creator but usually i'm not using it for creating that much mostly developing this thing is absolutely insane i mean i saw the videos on youtube i didn't believe it but then i had to try it and uh, yeah let me know if you guys are interested in seeing more about that 
And well, that's really it guys. Everything's linked down below. Make sure you check those out and I'll have them separated in categories. You could go through them and um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.